something before you no. have to tell us when we're live. Yeah, you got to tell us what to do. Yeah. It's live right now. What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I have super special guests, Scott and Bart from Scotch Test Dummies. Guys, why don't you say hello? Hello. Howdy. Howdy. All right. I'm going to get the uh, chat going over here on my phone, like you guys said, just because otherwise I won't be able to see what everybody's saying to us. But uh, today we'll be reviewing the Balvini single barrel sherry cask 15 year old. You guys have a bottle as well, right? That's right. Now, yeah. is, your, is your label still affixed to your bottle? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it... Ours is nude. All right, on. <laughs> you have a lot more than I do, but uh, I do have the the label still stuck on. What? Um, oh, it's in here. What cask do you have? This is cask number eleven thousand two hundred and seventy three, and it's bottle number six hundred and thirteen. We're cask number eleven thousand three hundred and two, bottle number sixty five. Mm. New, you got new glue. <laughs> and we're bottled at 47.8%. Rob, what do you got? 47.8%. Uh, I think that's the standard. I think 47.8% is what they they uh, decided to keep it at for all of them. Yeah, sometimes markets, some markets get a different ABV than United States. Usually it's stronger in the United States. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Stronger is better for sure. <laughs> Bart was whispering to me he's disappointed you shaved the beard. Yeah, it was getting bigger. You need was, to let it go like crazy. There's like a bromance going on here. Yeah. You know what? This honestly, this thing is like you ever you remember those nineties commercials, the chia pets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me. You sprinkle a little of that chia dust on it and it's so wait a couple of weeks, man. You'll get it back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, I, I, we need like, I, we want to see you with like Northern Canadian wild beard, man. Look, I want to see that. I want to see like twigs in there. Like you just came back from the North. All right. I'll, I'll see what I can do for you, Bart. No problem. You're, man. You were canoeing and just got in. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's funny you mentioned that because we, um, my brother was mentioning you know, one of those workout, those rowing machines. Yeah. I've, I've never been canoeing or, or actually maybe I've been canoeing. I've just never been rowing, like just solo rolling, rowing, I mean. Right. But uh, I got a buddy in Saskatchewan and his, he lives in Regina and rhymes it, with Dolores, <laughs> Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> and his, his, he and his wife oftentimes are like, he said, you drive as far north as you can. Then they catch a helicopter, and then they're like canoeing in some like land way where no one goes for a week or something. It sounded majestic. That's crazy. Yeah, and then he said when when they're about as far as they can go, they always bring a bottle of scotch and they open it up and drink it with all these other folks that go canoeing with them around a fire. Just sounded cool. <laughs> right on. I actually recently discovered that. Um, you could drive to the tip of Ontario and it would actually take you longer from from Toronto to the tip of Ontario. It would take you longer to get to the tip of Ontario than it would if you drove to the southernmost point of uh, the United States. Hmm. Really? Yeah. This is very distracting because on my phone, I see myself on the delay. It's <laughs> You're looking at your own beard. <laughs> you're, you're like looking at your own beard like look at that look at that beard we agree it's very distracting on this end i, I can barely focus on the dram <laughs> all right there we go sorry just playing around just playing around it's all good <laughs> so how many do we have so far we have about 18 viewers yep um we got mel and jeff we got Mike, Tom, right on. Some of the regulars for sure. What do you guys think of, you guys reviewed this already, right? Yes. Yes. Have you? I haven't. This is going to be my official review of it. Okay. It It's so good. I love it. 
I'm assuming Scott really likes it and Bart's on the fence about it, maybe. Yes, well, it was a little lackluster for me, but I'm I'm not here to I love Balvini. I'm not here to rain on anybody's parade. I was curious if it being open even longer had changed it or sweetened it up. But yeah, Scott, you big fan or fan. We'll we'll talk about it. All right, we'll talk about it. That's what we're here for. What are you guys getting on the nose? Jeremy's in the house. Jeremy actually is going to be doing a um, review with me this Thursday coming up on, I can't remember if we decided on three or four o Octomores. Maybe Ooh. he can let us know on the bottom. Wow. But I, he has them, so they're all Jeremy's, and he's a writer for Tw uh, Toronto Whiskey Society. So um, he's going to be jumping in on the channel. We're going to be doing a review and I think things might get a little bit uh, messy that day because we're going to be doing at least three different Octomores. So. Perfect. The 6.3 Octomore. Ooh, yeah. Apparently, we need to get to know Jeremy. Yeah. Jer yeah. Who's this Jeremy cat? <laughs> Jeremy knows what he's talking about, man. He's good yeah. Well, <laughs> but we don't. We so, got yeah. a canoe with him. <laughs> yeah, 6.1, 6.3, 7.1, 7.3. Wow, there we is. go. We haven't had the 7.1 or 7.3. So I'm pretty excited. Actually, I haven't had any of those four, mm. so I'm super excited about that. Well, it's a good way to start. Uh, I won't uh, – I, I think you'll see – I'll just – I don't want to – my palate may be different. I think you'll see a very nice difference between 6.1 and 6.3, and uh, it really – just seeing how different they can be it was it was astonishing. I mean, they should be, but I, I thought they would be a, a lot more similar, and they were not. That's all I'll say. <laughs> uh, there's One of them has an age statement, right? There's a 10-year-old or something like that? Yes, but I don't think it's any – I think all the 6.1s and the 6.3s are younger. I think they're all pretty much 5- and 6-year, maybe 7-year-olds. The 10 is a separate one, and it is, I mean, it's just marked a 10-year Octomore. Oh, okay. I believe. What do you get on the nose of this? Now, I'm getting, I'll tell you, before I love the nose on this, I thought it had a wonderful nose, and it's turned a little, almost a sour nuttiness. Yeah, I'm getting that. I get a little bit of a sour note on this as well. I think that's what I've gotten always. Was it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, a, uh, like a tangy sourness. Like, um, I want to say, like, a bit of prune juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get the sherry underlay in there. I've got, I don't get, I'm not getting the sherry notes that I got before. Before, I thought there was some wonderful sherry notes in there. Yeah. And I'm looking for them, and I'm not getting them. I'm really just getting kind of a, a sour, roasted almond. Mm. I get a little bit of the sherry in there. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, I get some sherry. I, I, I still feel like it's somewhat sweet on the nose. There's like a baked, like jammy note on the back end. Like you really got to weigh through. I, I That's what I'm picking up anyway. I, I might be wrong. All right, I'm going in for a taste. It's bad. Right, He's, he's swishing. That was a good swish. Mm. That was like a horse. <laughs> horse swish. I, I just ate, so avoid the horse swish. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Mm. Honestly, I like this. I like this a lot. I, I think it's got a lot of different notes to it. Not your typical sherry cask, which is strange considering it's a single barrel sherry cask but now i got a wonder palette and and up front on the mouth as soon as i put it in beautiful sweet sherry mm -hmm. and oak mm -hmm. but then it transitions to a little bit of a that sour nut comes through yeah which i've looked on i mean when we did our review when i bought this bottle and I got that. I had to look online, and Horst got it as well. He liked there was that kind of a that sour nut on the tail end. He really liked it. 
So yeah. I don't care for it. It's bitter. For me, it's bitter. Yeah, I, I mean, there is some bitter oak at the back end for sure. I'm not going to deny that. I, I do pick that up. But I don't I don't find any anything about it off-putting, to be honest with you. I've liked it better since the first the first time I opened up the bottle and the first drink I had, I found the nose was wonderful, the palate was wonderful, and the finish turned into that bitter almond. So it was like A plus on the nose, A plus on the palate, D on the finish. Mm. <laughs> but still good. But I've gone back to it, and to me, some of that bitterness on the end is gone. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely the sherry in there is is very good. I love it. But yeah, I was amazed even Horst because I pulled up his to see he had one up and and he noted the, the that bitter uh, finish on there, but he loved it. And so I think it's one of those some people like it, some don't. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Bart, I noticed you added some water. Did it change at all with the water? Not too much. I'm trying to see if it'll, to me, I'm still getting a lot of bitterness in there. I was curious if I, if I gave about three or four drops, if I'd get a little bit more of that sherry fruited raisin, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, in there. Oh, I, Jamie, I wanted more of it though. Jamie mentions that she finds it's mineral and a little sulfur. Uh, that's agree. Sour is probably what we're getting that sulfury type. No, oh, I think. I would agree. Mineral is 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 very apt. Yeah, I think that's a very accurate word for what what's going on on the palate for sure. Honestly, I like it. Oh, well, yeah. And overall, I've still drank it. And actually, uh, I've gone back to it a few times. And overall, now, I've still drank. It. Well, if I didn't like it, I probably wouldn't go okay. back to it. All right, all right. Um, and actually, I've kind of still uh, weaned my or weaned the bottle a little bit because I don't want to drink it too fast. Yeah. Um, I do. I still do find the the nose and the palate very good. Just a little bit of that bitterness on that tail end, and once you get used to that, or that mm. maybe it is the sulfur now that that the sulfur yeah. comment came up. Mineral for sure. I that but, is a very good note. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Jamie knows her stuff. She's um, she's quite versed when it comes to Balvini. Let's just say that. Hmm. Um, what Peter White, if he was here, I'm not sure if he is. I haven't seen him in the chat just yet. But what he would say, if you really enjoy the start of this bottle, like right when you open it, to start gassing it right away because um, with oxidization, it'll change it. And obviously – You've noticed that you didn't like the way it's changed, right? Uh, that's what I'm assuming, Scott, right? I'm sorry, I was typing. Gassing it and uh, the oxid oxidizing of it has changed it less favorable for you. No, no, I think it still is good. The nose was a little different than I remember. But sometimes day to day, you can get, have a little bit different a palate. You can have a little bit different uh, noses, you know, food, and stuff. Food. And I've I've learned don't don't judge a drink by one dram. Perfect. I was hoping. Yeah, you would say that's, I, I couldn't agree more with that because I find that there's whiskeys that I've had that I absolutely hated the first time I tried it, and then I I go back to it, and then I fall in love with it. So it's it's very strange how that can happen, but it's all about what you ate. Literally ate, drank, whatever just before it could or your mood even sometimes. Remind, remind me, there's a few comments about the compass box stuff up here. Oh, once we're yeah. done, once we're done with the Balvini, we can we'll talk. talk about, you'll open. We can it. talk some you'll compass open them. box. You're gonna open them up. <laughs> Bart doesn't like that you collect, right, Scott? No, yeah, he collects and looks at and puts. Hey, everything will be open someday. It's just it's gonna take a special occasion. I feel the same way. I have a I have a few that are waiting for a special day for sure. Now my book, my Booker's Rye has been open. Right, you I have had, surprised uh, me. On I occasion. had Compass Box, the General. The General, we opened that. Yeah. That was a surprise unveiling. Uh, he brought in like we were supposed to review. I don't even remember. It was supposed to be a pretty pedestrian, not pedestrian, a, a routine scotch. Oh yeah. 
or bourbon. I can't even remember. And all of a sudden, you're like, put that away. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then you brought it up. I was like, shut up. <laughs> But then the last the last hour of the uh, 12 hours of boom, I have the Knob Creek 25th anniversary. We're going to crack open. Hopefully uh, the wind will co cooperate. We'll be out right. by Bart's fire pit. And hopefully be by the pit, Cousin Shane and his acoustic guitarist present. Well, for those of you that don't know that are following the chat, I'm sure most of you do, if not uh, all of you. But uh, 12 hours of boom is next Saturday, right? And it's from 12 to 12? Am I correct? Or? Yes. Yep. Noon to midnight. CST. And and I'll be joining you guys, I believe, at 5 Eastern, so 4 your time. Or I can't remember if it was 5 your I got to double check my calendar. But yeah, like, yeah, we would have to look right too. Now. What we do need to hash out, Rob, is what, what dram we want to share. Sure. I thought we had decided on the um, the legacy. Just because we both had it, I couldn't remember if that's what we decided. But yeah, well, no, that came up. That came up for tonight during the live stream for, for oh, just tonight, yeah. and then we decided on the Balvini. Hmm. I can yeah. see the Om Root Fusion though. That might be a good one. We'd have to get it. Uh, oh. That might be a problem just because there's so <laughs> uh -oh. the LCBO and this. Oh, uh, look at right. that! That's a that beautiful one. bottle, though. I started this. I gave it an A, and this is how how things change because I honestly, if I had to review this again, I'd probably give it an A plus. I absolutely love this stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was, uh, I, that was something I bought and just showed up at Scott's house with, and he was like, wow. Yeah. It's, goes, it's crazy good. Like I could not believe how good it was. Mm -hmm. And it's reasonably priced too. It's about what? 80 bucks. Well, yep. 80 bucks for me, probably less for you. It's six, well, $65 here. Right. So conversion, that's probably right. About in line. Yeah, because I bought it having not tasted it, didn't know much about it. We just wanted to branch out, and we poured our first drams upstairs at uh, Scott's Island, basically. Scott's Island, that has a nice touch to it. Scott's <laughs> Island. It does. Sounds like somewhere in Scotland. Yeah, it does. Scott's Island. And uh, <laughs> we were both like, wow. I mean, uh, talk about a great joining a marriage. So. Yeah. No, it's awesome stuff. I I was pleasantly surprised. Now, I'll uh, tell you what, what, with the Omroot Fusion, and I just had a dram the other night, the peat is standing out to me more than it than it ever has. Hmm. And, I, and I think the first time or two I had it, I didn't maybe a slight peat or I, no peat. I've got to try it again. But the other night, it was, it, I mean, it was, it was really up front. It's been about two years. You said you have a bottle here? Mm hmm yeah, no, it's. You know what, I found it similar to like a Highland Park type peat, like not necessarily your Isla type peat. Hmm. I was just looking, Rob. We've got you slated. You're at five p.m. Central, so six Eastern. So six Eastern. Yep. Yep. Awesome. We have twenty-seven viewers right now. So. Really? Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you guys have any? Uh, well, I have it in a. Uh, Glenn Moran. Can you make out that title there? Poor man's proud of me. Oh. You guys have any of that? Well, there's there's different recipes out there, so it just depends. I've got Weller's 12, and I've got Antique 107. Uh, some people go ahead and mix it and then age it in a one of the little barrels as well. Yeah, this is this is Weller 12 and, and Antique as well, 107. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We can If you guys want to have a jam of that after, too. I'm good with that. I don't know what we'll figure something out for next week, but um, I don't know. I'm sure we have some some things that are you, similar for you, sure. You still have both. You still have the Van Winkle and the Weller's Twelve, don't you? The Weller Twelve, I absolutely crushed. Um, <laughs> I was going to tell you just do them side by side. I've done them side by side. A couple of times, and you can barely tell the difference. Mm. I actually did a, a blind tasting of Weller 12, Van Winkle 12, and Elijah Craig 12. And obviously, the Elijah Craig 12 is very different than the other two. Oh, I'm sorry. And the poor man's poppy was in that as well. That was when your buddy came over and helped you. That's right. Oh. Yeah. And the Elijah Craig came on top. Then the poor man's, then Weller, and then Van Winkle 12. So I don't oh. know. 
that was really weird. But no, that's I, cool. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I don't think you need to blend the poor man's pappy. I think you, the Weller's Twelve is the poor man's pappy, and that's almost not even so anymore. Someone tweeted a picture. A liquor store had Weller's Twelve on the shelf for two hundred and sixty-nine dollars. Mm. Did you see yeah. that the other day? That's just crazy talk. <laughs> I know. That that bottle, I mean, now you need to win a lottery in Ontario to get it, but um, it's 45 bucks, I think, like, something like that. Yeah, that's about normal. Yeah. And I, uh, someone just commented a little bit ago, they got two bottles of the Weller's 12 yesterday. Hmm. Oh, Tom R. I got two bottles of Weller 12 this week, he says. I know a person that still has a unopened bottle of Weller 12, an unopened bottle of the uh, Van Winkle 10, and an unopened bottle of the Van Winkle 12. Hmm. So, I don't know. If anybody's interested, down below I can send you the email address. <laughs> uh, Tom R. just commented he paid 38 bucks for both of them for a piece for his bottles. So, that's a good, that's a good deal, and that's a good liquor store right there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think do we do we all see that picture of the uh, Van Winkle ten and the Van Winkle twelve? One was twelve hundred bucks American, the other one was like fifteen hundred bucks American. Yeah, sitting in a in a glass case in the store. Yeah, yeah. like uh, these people on drugs. I don't understand. <laughs> I know it's just name recognition. Well, and people don't know. I mean, they that's don't. what they uh, think I, that's what you get. Yeah, I know. I mean, they think I was in buying. a liquor store looking for a Port Charlotte cast strength that was showing from Brook Lottie that it was in this particular liquor store in the city where we live. And I went in and I asked the guy behind the bar and he's looking and he's asking like the, the, the owner and some guys in line goes, well, I'd get Pappy, get Pappy. You need to buy the Pappy. I'm like, well, shut up. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm like, we're not even in the, he's like, cause they were like, they kept saying whiskey, of course. And he just zeroed in like, you should buy the Pappy. I'd buy, he kept saying, I'd buy all the Pappy they got if it was in here. What, what the hell? <laughs> he was wearing a suit and I was just like, who is this Yahoo? So I was just like, well, I'm, I happen to be looking for a particular peated whiskey. Uh, uh, Keith, Keith Peterson comments that the Weller 12 is $35 at K and L. Uh, Keith, or uh, do, 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 he must be looking online because then he's got it twenty two dollars at Total Wine, mm. uh, which Jeff Pickering is in here as well. He's a Total Wine. Pickering. Twenty two dollars at Total Wine. That is an absolute steal. Twenty two bucks. That's yeah. a damn good whiskey for twenty two bucks. Let's touch again briefly. Someone just joined in and asked us, "What? Well, how's the Balvini fifteen? <laughs> Yeah, this is a Balvenie review, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, eventually you get done with it and you move on. But that is but, funny. Yeah. They're like, well, they have they wrapped up the Balvini? Yeah. Um, to me... Is, go ahead, go ahead, Scott. To me, the Balvini, an A-plus on the nose, an A-plus on the palate, a, a D on the finish. I, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's a bitterness in there. A lot of people get it. It's there. I don't care for it. The rest of it makes up for it. I still have a hard time not drinking the rest of my bottle. I kind of parcel it out just to have one every once in a while. Right so, like, overall, according to your scores, how like what would that? Um, I'd have to look up. I think I gave this yeah, like an 88, 88 plus 89. or minus 12. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the it, I think I gave it an 89. The, the, the bitter finish knocks it below a 90 for me. If, if that bitter finish wasn't on there with the nose and the palate, it'd be a 95 probably. Yeah, okay. That's fair. I, honestly, I, I would say this is an A for me for sure. So according to my scale, I'm between like 84 and 89 is an A for me. So... Yeah, I would definitely say this is an A. But I really, I think I'm a lot like you, Scott. I, I really like sherried whiskey. So, yeah. This one I. Now, and uh, this is, I want to say, I think a $100, $110 bottle. And, See, and I that, probably wouldn't buy it again. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and that's fair. But Canadians are very upset about hearing that price because at the LCBO, this goes for. Over double what you just said. Really? Mm. Yeah. Wow. 
We're talking like I think it's like 280 or something like that. So I mean, uh, Belvini has nothing to do with what the LCBO decides for pricing. Um, there's a monkey at LCBO headquarters that spins a wheel, and whatever the price lands on, that's what they decide to charge their customers. So unfortunately, that's that's what we're left with. Well, so I was going to show now. This is uh, courtesy of the our, our whiskey scout that scouts. Kansas, Nebraska, and Missouri liquor stores right. for us. A little bit of Texas. He recently found this Oklahoma. is what this was discontinued and the 15 year sherry cask replaced. So this is just a standard, this is a, uh, I believe, just bourbon cask, 15 year single barrel, non sherry. How is that one? Yeah. These are, are delicious. No. But you've had it. That's the one we met Whiskey Scout at Starbucks right, and he right. brought me. Now these are different though because these are from um, I'm pretty sure bourbon barrels. But these will only be they won't because and then they won't get more than 350 bottles um, out of a cask with this. Whereas the 15 year sherry cask, they'll get up to 800 bottles because they're using um, sherry butts. Mm -hmm. right. So they're bigger. Yeah. Uh, now this one was. Yeah, you got a lot of glare on there. Uh, March sixteenth of ninety five. It was distilled and then uh, bottled in January of twenty ten. That's probably worth a pretty penny right about now. I don't know. The whiskey scout basically he'll go around. He kind of like scours every liquor store. I think he finds these little ones that are like you know we can't sell that. Uh, nobody pays seventy five dollars for whiskey around yeah. this town. <laughs> you know, I and can't they, this, a town like that. Yeah. Well, there, there, the, all these little, you know, liquor stores dotted all over, and he'll, he'll just go in and wander around. He's, he's, he's always finding some cool stuff. He just found me some odd bottle that I had to get a Willie Nelson something something that comes with a guitar pick i'm like do it i want it on the show nobody will watch that one but i need to have it with the guitar pick so i just want to let you guys know the whole night that i did the review with bob and the beard we were flirting with 30 viewers but never quite hitting it and right now we're at 31 so all right that's all credit to you guys because that's not here for me. <laughs> We're beardless. Well, well, Bart, we get a bonus one. Over Bart's, wa Bart's wife went to Puerto Rico, yes. so they probably got the whole family tuned that's in right. down there. Puerto Ricans are they tuning in. All signed in on different accounts. No, we should have like 300 viewers because that's yeah. just like immediate family for a Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm in a lot of trouble for not going. <laughs> yeah. Was well, that was like, <laughs> well, she's gone for two weeks. Oh wow! Oh yeah, flew to the island, and then and I'm like, no. Nope. Mm -mm. Well, big day for you guys tomorrow. Right. Yeah, you can hear there's a bunch yeah, of fireworks popping. going off yeah, tonight. We got some some office pops going off out there right now. Yeah. There's some Canadians that are upset that uh, the the first of July, so Canada Day, was on a Saturday this year. So they're rebelling by doing fireworks tonight. Ah. Yeah, 150 years. Yeah, I, that's pretty young, I think, compared to most. But that's cool. It's good. So uh, now that we have a chance before we pour our next dram, why don't you guys? I know majority of when we talked about the whiskey fabric and how. I mean, I think you guys were the ones that invented the the concept of the whiskey fabric, but. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, Joanne. Well, yeah, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, give, give that one to Joanne. Well, Joanne McGinnis, and, and she had a few uh, close friends at right. whiskey folks that sit around, and they coined the term a while back. They did. We kind of we now, piggyback because we love the philosophy. I we took it digital or video. Yeah, but and uh, unintentionally, or I mean, sure. we didn't see. Yeah, it's it's turned into this great deal. Uh, you know, us hooking up with you. Oh, over yeah. there. We've hooked up with people in Scotland, right? Uh, Instagram people, Korea. Twitter people, uh, video bloggers, right. uh, just uh, bloggers themselves, right? Distilleries, taxi drivers. Did we? I mean, did we? Did I see <laughs> the big picture of, of the? 
And, and we've We're had a lot dummies. of people tell us how we've brought the whiskey fabric together, but Dumb. did we see that or envision that? Nope. No. Just love hanging out with whiskey folk. Yeah. So, yeah. No, but, well, really, I, I will say, though, you, for sure you guys invented the concept of, like, bringing everybody together because – up until you guys started doing your lives, not that wasn't really happening. I don't think anyway. I, don't, I didn't see anybody else do it. Like and you know, they say imitation is the best form of flatter. Uh, flatter. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we we've all jumped aboard this live, you know, reviewing, and that's thanks to you guys. So I want to say thank you. But well, thanks. I mean, it's a blast. We love doing it, yeah. and I mean, we wish. Of course, we got full-time jobs. You got a full-time job. We'd love to maybe someday when we retire, we'll be doing a daily show. That sounds hard. Hard work <laughs> in the future. <laughs> daily whiskey show. Watch out. We'll come in. We'll get like a hot tub and just, it'll be called tub dramming. <laughs> <laughs> Seven nobody, days boom. Yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody want to tune into that. They'll be like, what the hell? Where'd these guys go wrong? <laughs> oh, hey. So uh, special guest Bubba's joining us in the tub today. They're like, "Oh my god, that's like a hair suit." <laughs> <laughs> Where's Rob? Where's yeah. whiskey in the six? Yeah, we need whiskey in the Ooh. six. Got to have a good beard in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, when Bubba told me that he was six five, I was absolutely floored. I, I don't know if he's watching. Maybe he's busy tonight, but. I haven't, I haven't seen them commenting, so they're probably out popping fireworks off yeah. their head or something. Yeah, they're launching, like, rocket bottle rockets out of the beard. Swami's with us now. <laughs> Swami! Good old Swami. That's it. If you guys haven't um, checked them out yet and you're watching this right now, check out Malted in Montreal. Super cool guy. His name's Swami. He's a little abrasive, but... You got to. Got to have that abrasive side. He's got like a New Yorker in him. <laughs> no, he's the, yeah, uh, the hip, portion of him. He's the only hipster rabbi from the Bronx <laughs> uh, YouTube reviewer, he says. That was his term. Yeah. He's, late. he's late to your show due to a bris. <laughs> <laughs> I need to what, are we, what are we pouring next, guys? What are we pouring next? <laughs> what are Wait, we pouring? What are well, you let's pouring? go. Uh, what do you, you, got, for, what do you got for bourbon? I have for bourbon at the moment, I think my bourbon, I got four rows single barrel. Mm, barrel yeah. straight. That's good, but we don't have that. Well, actually, we have some. What's the recipe on that? This one is 35% rye mash bill. It's eight years, eight months. I so on, on one of the side labels, they'll have four-letter designation for the recipe. Mm. Uh, O-B-S-Q. Hold on. He's checking. We got him. That'd because be the, cool. The beaver sent him to O-B-S-Q. O-B-S-Q. He's going to check. The beaver out of Florida sent us a little, some samples on that. Oh, nice. O-B-S-Q. He's going to check. He's got like a, like a sample box that we're getting ready because we're using a lot of them during that 12 hours of boom right on so he's going to I, take uh, a poop. i bought this in the u.s i bought it in buffalo and oh. when i bought it my brother's a, a canada customs agent so i didn't want to get him in trouble and he was with me so i claimed it like an idiot because i paid 60 american for the bottle and then i ended up having to pay 70 dollars in canadian what tax. The tax. Oh my God! They taxed it that much. They they raped me. That's what they did. They didn't tax it. They raped me. <laughs> what? Yeah, seventy dollars in tax. Wow! Holy yeah. moly! You're just that's just wow. They don't play around in Ontario. They they do not play around. I would like to use other words, but this is a family show. Sure, sure. <laughs> Wow, he bought a seven the seventy dollar bottle, and then he declared it because his brother's a customs agent. And they charge him another another sixty dollars oh. in tax. <laughs> Holy moly! So you got the recipe? Yeah, OBSQ. We OBSQ. Got, uh, I need OBSQ. a water rinse. Now that designates the mash bill, the OBSQ, and I don't know. We'd have to look it up online to see. Hmm. There's ten. There's ten different mash bills, basically. Why so cryptic? So, Did, does uh, yours have an age statement? Do you know how old yours is? 
Uh, eight he's year, got eight, yeah. Eight year, three month. Okay, eight. so this is eight year, eight months. So it's a, a five months older. Huh. And it's 58.3%. Okay, this is 58.7. Okay. You have a little water? Now, 22 Catch 22 says OBSQ is my second favorite recipe, maybe favorite on some days. Wow. Just like out. Um, Lamy, if you need $100, man, I will eat transfer you at the end of this show. <laughs> <laughs> I got more glasses. Oh, that's good, too. All right, we'll leave that. We'll leave that then for a sipper. Oh, wait, give me that one. That's one of the originals. I'd rather give you my hundred dollars than the Ontario government. That's for sure. There you go. Uh, somebody comment and look up. Tell us what the OBSQ recipe is or right. the mash bill. You think they wouldn't? Why? Why would they put it in the letters? Just say what it is. Yeah, I still haven't reviewed this yet, but. It's incredible. I, I really like it. I, it's very similar in my opinion. You guys probably had more of the Elijah Craig barrel proof, but I feel like they're very similar. Mm, really? Well, we're going to find out. Got to get you the checks. Um, now, that it's a little lower because most of your Elijah Craig barrel proofs are 62. coming in at 68. Ooh. Yeah, monsters, like yeah. Seven, so 70. Monsters. That's true. You're right because yeah. there was a 70 even. Yeah. And they're 12 years old, too, which is crazy. I can't believe they can get it that high at 12 years old. Wow, strong nose. Yep. Clove, pepper. This one doesn't need water. I don't know. Maybe you guys have a difference of opinion, but I don't feel like nice. it. Yeah. Hmm. Swami 200, you got it, buddy. <laughs> Swami thinks I'm rich, I think. I, honestly, I'm a teacher, buddy. <laughs> I'm not rich. I'm far from it. Wow, very flavorful, nice mouthfeel. I don't, I don't get anything on the nose besides a, a strong mm. bourbon. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, well, it's definitely a bourbon. But. You don't get the clove? No, I get a little clove. It's strong. Huh. I love you too, Swami. Wow. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's strong for sure, but I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a drop of water, but I don't think it needs. Oh no, mm. I love strong. That's good. Okay, That's now good. I see what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Wow. Way to and go, Four Roses. That's the first Four Roses single barrel I've had. Yeah. No, Very, I, I bought one a long time did ago. Did we have single barrel? Was it yeah. single barrel? Yep. That looks like he's in a little bit of pain over there. No, he's digging it. That's no, his, digging it. Yeah, that's his like moment. Very, well, that's very, very, rich, good. very rich caramel and vanilla <laughs> on that one. And I'm gonna add a little water just because that's got to open that up a little bit. As, as strong as that is, mm. I'll, I'll take this to drop. I think there's a little bit more corn used in the in the Elijah Craig because it's it comes in a little bit thicker and sweeter, but I, they're very comparable in my opinion. I, like I did a little bit of a head to head. I just didn't have enough of the Elijah Craig barrel proof to to do a, a solid couple glasses, but I feel like they're they're similar in a lot of ways. Well, I think so. Here's another one, an OBSQ online that's ten years and eleven months. So they're ra they're ranging in ages mm. a little bit as well. Okay, well the O wow. mean the O means it's from Four Roses Distillery, so they distilled it. Okay. Um, o, I mean B, the the second letter B means it's sixty percent corn, thirty five percent rye, and five percent malted barley. Mm. The S indicates straight whiskey. And then the the last letter, the Q, is the yeast strain that was used. So you could get different yeasts. So the key would be the B for the actual mash bill. And then the Q for the yeast strain would be of interest. And yes. then if they have a different distillery, maybe. Cool. That's very cool. The other, the other main mash bill, if you got an OE instead of an OB, mm. the E is seven is higher corn and less rye. <laughs> wow, caught that one off. 
<laughs> you said iron corn. <laughs> ah, raw swole, bro. <laughs> uh, just to answer Jacques' question, I believe it's pronounced Jacques. Um, Elijah Craig, 12, worth $40 US. I would say yes. What would you guys say? Uh, he must be in Canada because we were just, yeah. you were just commenting last night on Food Quig's live stream because the Elijah Craig 12 is gone in the States. I don't ever see it anywhere. Yeah. Um, and even you commented it's all over in Canada still. Yeah, I can send you guys a bottle if you like. If you want one, I can send one over to you. Not if we got to pay $60 taxes at the border. <laughs> Leave it unsaid. Leave it unsaid. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We'll talk after. We just got, yeah, we just got flagged by the NSA. That's right. Live abort, shows abort. are like, rap. Trump is call. Trump's call. tweeting about what? it right now. Trump is <laughs> tweeting about it right now. The dummies <laughs> trying to bring stuff in. Without NAFTA. <laughs> uh, so anyway, back to the Elijah Craig 12, though, for 40 Yeah, that's probably uh, $40, $45 would be top end for it. Because the regular we, one we're getting is probably eight-year-old now. We just reviewed the standard, Elijah, the, the new, the non-age statement, Elijah Craig, that's $25. And I, it really impressed me today. Our review on that will be coming out in a couple of weeks. But mm-hmm. Yeah. I, we are charged 47 and I think that's a great deal. Canadian dollars, that's – I think it's a great deal for Elijah Craig. That's a good, that's a good price, Canadian. That's very good. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to talk a little bit about the whiskey fabric over here. I, I review in – my, in my last review, I mentioned it and I signed it, and eventually this will be getting to you guys, but Bubba and the Beard asked first. and It says it on the rule card, actually. I don't know if – I do have it here. Sure. Uh, Jeff – Jeff said that we have to um, send it to whoever asks for it first. And apparently, I agreed to it first, so Jeff sent it to me first. So thank you, Jeff. I know you're watching right now. Um, But, yeah, so I'll be sending this to Bub and the Beard, and I'm assuming you guys will be getting it either next or at some point in the next little while. I want if a I picture. Have any advice, though, I recommend that you sign on the black because when you sign on the bottles, it doesn't come out as good. Gotcha. Uh, I want to see. I want to see Lloyd wrapped in it, like a, like a blanket in front of a fire. Commando. Well, you never know. You can't tell. Don't do it, Commando. Just, no. the, beard, just the beard hanging out. Yeah, just a little beard. <laughs> He's wearing it like a smock. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. And then boom, like he signs it, he's pointing to a signature on there. That'd be awesome. That'd be BA. I I don't know where Lloyd said he was gonna be here. I'm kinda of disappointed I don't see him yet. Probably building a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Their show was was built around a fire. Wow, you're having another moment. No, I'm just I'm trying I'm trying to a, get focused back on it oh, for a second. That was a good, good moment. I mean it's not um I don't think there's anything really jumping out at me. I mean, the well, high ABV of right. first. Wonderful mouthfeel. I get a caramel on the finish. That caramel lingers. Cinnamon and vanilla. I get vanilla. Not get really me. This Just me, not getting the cinnamon. This is not knocking the Elijah Craig barrel proof from its perch. No. no you can call it. Four, let's see there. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, uh, four Roses. It's a, it's a bottle of Zumba. <laughs> that's good it's not quite a wow but it's like a zoom it's like a <laughs> bottle of bottle of zoom yeah no it's it's up there for sure it's one of the better bourbons i've had but i, yeah. I wish I had more of the elijah craig to know for sure it is it, it's not bad i get a burst of flavor though i like that it, it, it's got it's got a burst of flavor it's kind of the standard usual notes for a strong bourbon all right, we're doing our 16-bottle bourbon shootout, but it's all 50% or lower. We've talked about sometime in the future we'll do 50 and above. And I could, I mean, this will have to be in there. Well, let me know. I'll send you some um, Blanton's Gold. Oh, Lord, yeah. That one's 51. Uh, a little 51. Love, love the Blanton's. Well, um, for those that don't know, Bubba and the Beard, they are working on – they're they're trying to get a, a barrel-proof showdown done. Good. Good so, move. Yes. Their body weight, they can probably oh, handle yeah. it better. Big people. Than me. Large, yeah. Scott's we. We Scott. 
<laughs> the, when I did the live review with them, we we stayed up drinking till probably three o'clock in the morning, and it was <laughs> morning the next day. That's just oh yeah. wow, yeah. <laughs> they do that to everybody. Really, they keep no drinking like oh that? yeah, Swami. You watched them and huh? Swami the no. other night. What a oh. They just kept them first. Up first, they went for two and a half hours. Oh live. wow, Swami buckled after the first half hour. I think. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So they're, they're just like killers. Oh wait, Lloyd Lloyd Fink is here now. Lloyd's in. Lloyd, <laughs> Lloyd the Killer Fink is what I'm calling him from now on. <laughs> or the whiskey killer. Oh, they're together. They must be filming. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, he says getting ready to film the Boss Hog. Ooh, there you go. Awesome. Yes, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say about that. <laughs> nice. Uh. But uh, Beard, we were just talking about you guys said you were going to do, you've got your own barrel proof mm. showdown that's yeah. coming up. So we're, we're more than excited. We want you yeah. to take that venture. Run it. And we want you to do all 12 or 16 in one sitting. One sitting. I think Beard will have to take about 30,000 pee breaks. In oh. That. <laughs> <laughs> but then we moved on to how influential you guys are in, in having, after live streams, how we stay on drinking with you guys. Mm. And we think you damn near killed Swami. Yeah. <laughs> killers. And you missed you. We want to see Lloyd wrapped in the whiskey fabric. Uh, what is that? Is that a tapestry? Is that a blanket? What is that? It's it's like a tablecloth almost. Table, yeah, we want to yeah, Lloyd's gotta wrap himself in it. Like a smock. commando. Commando wrapped in it. And tweet out a picture. Lloyd's gonna leave his DNA in the whiskey fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, Lloyd six one as well, deceiving me. <laughs> yeah, he's beside uh, Bubba, but I mean, they could both wrap themselves in it. it. I don't think it'll wrap them. They yeah. have to snuggle up like it's like it's winter in in <laughs> Philly. He's gonna sign it with his body. No, it's Pittsburgh. No, it's not Pittsburgh. Where they they're live? Near. I can't they're remember. Near they're near, they're but I can't remember the town yeah. though. I can't remember the town of Pennsylvania. I'm it's dumb. Like. Right. Swami's wife wanted to kill him after the review. He said that he had to buy her something really special. That, that's wow. the only reason I hung in for two and a half hours. Was I figured any moment she was going to come in there and kick his ass all over. Really? The place. Oh, she yeah. didn't want him on the show that long? Well, she's trying to sleep. She was in bed. Oh, and yeah. she could hear him? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she texted him like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Queen Bee's in the house, too. Oh, Queen, Queen Bee. Bee. I, I tried to convince my wife to come on the at least the, the group chat, and she had no interest. None. Yeah, mine won't. Mine doesn't want to be anywhere near the camera. Beard says Emporium. Emporium. Yeah, Emporium, Pennsylvania. How far from Pittsburgh? Uh, Jeff, we do not want any DNA on that fabric. <laughs> I'm just talking body hair. <laughs> that, Jeff is Jeff is collecting all of our DNA. He's gonna yeah. Come on now. Bring a whiskey clone. Couple, couple, yeah, a Queen, couple skin cells. Queen Bee is Bubba's wife. Yes. There, she's the filmographer. Yo, you bet. Go, Queen Bee. I wish my wife would help once in a while with the channel. She's probably listening right now thinking, that bastard. No, son of a gun. Dram, <laughs> Dram Dude says his wife is not excited about the 12 hours of boo. Oh, because he's going to be he's gonna be glued. Good thing well, is, be well, I'm gonna be carrying a, a walkie or uh, headphones with me all day for that thing. <laughs> There'll be 15 minute breaks, so you can just run off. Pretend I would to do something. I would now. I know people will be tuning in and out throughout sure. the day. You bet. And it's there's gonna, gonna be, be two. There's gonna be the two best episodes are the first one and the last one. You think? Yeah. There's some gold. I'm just guessing. There's gold in there. I'm just saying after 12 drinks, that last well, one could be. Because we're moving a little bit safely. There, there's going to be. We want to make sure we're drinking responsibly. So, so we are going to be changing locations. You're going to see some locations from your and yawn. I feel like um, you guys should take a blood test before you start, and then have one after, and then yeah, have a doctor nearby. We have planned. There will be a doctorish. We're making plans to have a, a doctorish a, a trained, a doctorish in trained to person. Us throughout persons the trained in it. Yeah, and then we we know our metabolism and we know how much we can process because we are seriously going to 
we want to be responsible. We don't want to scare away distilleries or anything like, what are these guys doing? So yeah. I think, I think mommy just said something along the lines of by the end of the 12 hours, you guys will be in the state that he was in, in the first 30 minutes of his last review. Yeah, we will see. We will see. Uh, Amy, Amy is excited. She's going for the whole 12. Woo. Go Amy. That'll be fun. It's going to be good. Lloyd, Lloyd points or, uh, uh, Beard points out that 10 p.m. will be the best. That's when they're on the show. Oh, how do we get? I don't know. Mark Gillespie. Whoop, watch so out. This is saying that you guys can pump a IV in the 15 minute break. So we, <laughs> we could. I'm an I'm an old army medic. I've run double IVs before. <laughs> now, uh, let me point out we've got we've got a couple of returning guests. Right. We've got new guests. Yes. We've got. Uh, liquor store owner that's True. joining us. Guy that ran the very first scotch tasting I ever set up. And and apologies to those that we couldn't invite on. True. We've got a lot of people we would have liked to add on. But we're going to do more of these. Next year, we're planning 24 hours of booze. No, no. He keeps saying that. I'm like, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> that's crazy. I can't even do 24 like with coffee. It could be a 24-hour coffee boom, and I wouldn't make it. I think I would have a worse, uh, more tough time with coffee than I would with uh, whiskey. That's for sure. Yeah. Now, Mel Troja or Basement Drammer, he says, I'm not a doctor, but he did stay in a Holiday Inn there, last night. He's in. You're in. And <laughs> I still want to do a couple spontaneous call-ins. So, like, if we've got somebody's DM or something on Twitter, we might just, like, hit them up and say, here, here, call in. Boom. Speaker phone. Bam. That's what I want to do, but that'll depend because we're, you know, we're, we may have somebody miss a deadline and we got to just fill time or whatever. Yeah. So that's going to be a little bit, a little bit wild west. I think. I I think it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited for it. I'm, I'm glad that you guys came on my show. Squeeze me in before, uh, before the 12 hours of boom, because I think <laughs> we're in training right now. That's it. Well, <laughs> we have 34 viewers right now that, Woo! be at least in six of those 12 hours if not the full 12. the only thing i was wondering is how like for those 12 hours do you get any ad any ad funds for that how's that work well we're gonna do 12 45 minute different shows with a little 15 minute break so they'll stay up and they'll stay as recorded shows that people can go watch um That's smart. But we don't have any sponsors or anything, I mean, or anything like that. But, I mean, yeah. so they'll stay up as, even when the live show's over, they'll, they'll still stay up as recorded. So if we end up hitting on some gym, you know, who knows, maybe it'll get a ton of views or something. But um, it's just something a little different. And um, there's a guy that I used to do a board game review show with, and he would do a 24-hour live board gaming marathon. And that was what I'd kind of mentioned and that's where we came up with the 12 hours. You guys hitting a little bit more of that four barrel? Or, uh, yeah, well, I went ahead. I poured a little bit more in there. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I like it. It's better uh, than you. I, I feel like the finish kind of drops off at some point. Like it just, you, you have it, you have it, and then all of a sudden it's just gone. I think that's the biggest difference between this and the Elijah Craig. Mm. Elijah Craig lasts a lot longer. The boom is magical. The wow is magical. Wow. The wow. Yeah, the bottle of wow. Yeah, the wow is magical. Do you guys have any um, McAllen 12-year-old there? Ma'am. Mm. Of course, I always got the McAllen 12 mm. on him. I got, a, I got a little sample over here that I picked up in Arizona. That is beautiful. I was just eyeballing the other day, and I got to buy more of it. Oh, you didn't pick one up? No, I was buying – I bought the lore and a bunch of other stuff, and I just – got the wife some wine and i was like i'll get it later but yeah i love the 12. 12 is quality stuff i really like the the double cask to be honest with you i'm that's I'm, good too you know when you go just try them side by side if you haven't i i, I did a review of all three of the of all three of the 12s together uh. um, i haven't marked them yet but i i put them side by side and ranked them and i i say that dc comes in a touch better on the palate than the 12 sherry, but the nose on the 12 sherry is a bit better, I think. See, I love, we did them, and, I, and I, individually, I love the double cask, and it's still, it's damn good too, mm. but next to the the, the standard 12-year exclusive Oloroso sherry, 
Uh, that that 12 years of exclusive Oloroso Sherry wins out every time, just like the Glendronic 15, 15 well, years of exclusives. Phenomenal. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. It is incredible. I have another bottle stashed away of the 2015. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think 20 years old. Mm. I don't know if that's true. The rumor is about that Glenfiddich 15 year old. Have you guys heard about that? The Glendronic? Glendronic, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I do the same thing. I keep calling it Fiddick. Yeah. Yeah, we looked up. I think that 15, depending on which 15 bottling you get, it's like a 19 or a 20 year old, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think it stops as of 2016. And then once the 2017s come out, if they haven't already, it resets back to 15 years old. Fill me on this. What's that? The Glendronic Distillery was I shuttered. I missed that. Really? Yeah, for a few years. So oh. they had the barrel set and marked, and then they come in and bottled them while they'd sat there for a while. So I a lot of your, that. And I think well, it's not just the 15 year, though, either. I thought it was really kind of their core range stuff is older oh. than this. So the 12 already reset. The 15 was like that for, well, like I said, it's going to be like that until next year. And the 18 is still going for a few more years and then the 21 will be starting next year so every time you buy a bottle of 21 year old it's actually going to be a year older it's going to go up to 27 years old in i think 2023 or something like that huh swami's leaving night swami get out swami night swami wife must be gone yeah, time, to, time to go don't, make don't a do sandwich. it again his wife snapped the whip beside her leg and he's like okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gonna be like, oh hell no, uh -uh, yeah. I ain't leaving. I'm staying. I'm Can't watching. Go now. <laughs> I'll pay. <laughs> I'm gonna be pouring this uh, Macallan 12. I'm gonna leave a little bit. I still haven't reviewed it individually, um, but I plan to. Dishes. Hold on, I gotta. I mean, this is the last one I gotta have. Uh, I'm not going to pour a Macallan 12. I'm still sipping on my Four mm. Roses. I'll tell you, though, we did our top five 12-year-olds, mm. and the Macallan 12 is my number one mm. top five 12-year-old. Love it. I, the only the only t two 12-year-olds that I think are arguably in ballpark or possibly better are the Glen Goyne and the Glen mm. Did you guys do the Glen Goyne 12-year-old? Yes. What'd you think of that? Very Loved impressed it. with that as well. That, I I got a ton of coconut in that one. I don't know. If, did you guys notice that? Um, I, don't I don't think I got coconut. Up. I don't remember a delicious. ton, but I was, yeah, there might have been some coconut. This in is that a one. lovely nose. My goodness. <laughs> oh. It's crazy how McCallum can be so different on the nose than everything else. Like You just know it's a McCallum. Mm. That's what I find anyway. Mm. God, I love scotch. <laughs> Do you guys have uh, the ten-year-old Glen Goyne? No, we haven't. We have not seen that one. I haven't opened it yet. I was I was hoping you guys had it, then we could have done it. Mm. How about the um, Glendronic batch strength or batch uh, cast strength? Sorry. Nope, haven't seen that. We don't have we don't have Glen Goyne or Glendronic either one in Kansas. Got to go to Texas. Yeah, okay. um, Colorado has it. Really. This one right here, the, the batch four is ridiculously good. Like, not even joking, one of the best whiskeys I've ever had in my life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we did get today a sample from uh, the Paul, one of the Paul John ambassadors, a J. Mm. Nice. He sent, he sent us the Sherry Oloroso cask mm. strength sample. Uh, have you tried it yet or no? Oh, no. Well. I think we're going to do that with him on the show. He's, yeah, we're going to do a live show with him, uh, hopefully within the month. And I don't know if he's wanting to do that one or something else. We'll right, that's true. Unknown. I think I'll be one of the first to do the Cavalon, um Solis PX, the Amontillado, and the Manzanella. They're going to be coming up shortly. I, I did a head-to-head -head on all three of these, and then I'll be doing an individual review of each. Hmm. Have you tried any of these? Nope, haven't I seen have them. The bottle, I'll show you. This is the box. 
crazy expensive box. They're, it's only seven years old, um, but this one costs five hundred bucks, I believe, American. Wow. I got it in a trade. I actually traded the. I think I told you guys in the in our group chat. Um, I traded the lot B, twelve year old for this, the Amontillado Solist. So I'm pretty excited about it. Mm. I got the tasty samples, and the samples are incredible. So, mm. Alex Lee just commented that he just saw the Scotch Four Dummies reviewing the Glendronic 15, and they reviewed that so they could get it done because we're going to have them on on a live stream on the 16th, and that's what we're doing on the live stream is the Glendronic 15. So they wanted to get their the solo review of it done first before the live stream. Oh, nice. And that'll be a, a should be a nine p.m. show on the sixteenth. What does it cost over there? Ooh. Well, when I that's the day the wife comes back. When I the sixteenth. Yeah, July. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Still running out there. Ooh, it's all right. Uh, not ninety bucks originally. Right before it went off line, basically it jumped up to about one twenty, one thirty. Okay. Now so, we had we were doing a live stream a couple of weeks ago, I think, when we were talking about it, and I think it was Roy Roy was watching, and in a small liquor store in Durango, Colorado, he just found three bo dusty bottles on the shelf of the oh. Glendronic 15 for 90 bucks oh. a piece. So we got them. Wow. We probably told him, "Hey, you can't sell these. Knock off the price. <laughs> I'll take these off your hand. Nobody wants these." In Alberta, they they go for about. About that, 110, 120, depending on who you buy from. And then obviously you got to pay the shipping and stuff like that. But so a lot of people don't know it, and I haven't mentioned it on my channel just yet, but uh, why not now? Um, anywhere in Canada, can you can, as long as you have a courier that will ship the whiskey, you can order whiskey from other provinces. So you can get up to nine liters at a time. That's per box. So for those of you that are unable to buy, find a courier that'll ship whiskey to you and, and you'll be able to get it anywhere in Canada. And Alberta and Nova Scotia have the best prices by far. Hmm. Now, is Canada ever going to kick the door open on these, on these whiskey stores and just let it go private? Is that ever going to happen? Um, in Ontario, that... Unfortunately, business-wise would be the stupidest decision they've ever made in their life because that pays direct to the government and the government's making a ton of money off of alcohol in Ontario. So, gotcha. Yeah, they're not going to change that. No, I don't see that happening, but I mean, it would be great for us if it did. I just don't see it actually happening. And there, there's, there's, you know, those politicians that actually do what the people want, that doesn't actually happen. So. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, if they're making that much money, yeah, they're not going to change it. Yeah. Huh. This Gallon 12 is fantastic stuff. It is. But I went back to look, Rob, because we had you on a live stream February 5th. Okay, so, so well, we're almost five months ago. Yeah, five months ago. Look at the beard. Look we, at the beard on there. Eh, it's not too much. It's oh, it is. Two on it. Look at that. But we did the Glen Goyne 25 <laughs> with you, and that's what led me to buy the 18. That is true. Yeah. And then the 18 led me to get get the 12 and the 15 right. year Glen Goyne. That is, yeah. You opened that door for us. I plan to re-review it. Um, I'm not going to give away the mark, but obviously, if I'm re-reviewing it, it's going to improve. Uh, it's fantastic. It's I bought a second bottle because, and it's not cheap, but I bought a second bottle anyway just because it's fantastic stuff. Now, where where are you at? How are you feeling in your uh, YouTube reviews in your whiskey world from February fifth to now? So, I actually noticed like a huge growth when I was around seven hundred subscribers. I hit a thousand. It was like eyes closed. It. I hit. I think I hit six hundred in December, and then from then to March, I hit a thousand. So I hit four hundred in a few months. And then since then, it's slowed down substantially, or maybe just more than I thought it would. I'm still getting about 90 to 100 subscribers a month, but I'm about four. I'm just I just hit over 1,400 right now. Um, but I've been this is 
a year and a half for me now. So not, I can't complain. It's been pretty decent for me. No, yeah, it's great. Where, where was you at? Do you remember February 5th as far as subscribership? Um, how many reviews you'd done at that time? Do you remember? So I do about two a week and I would say, uh, in February I was probably around 700 subscribers ish. Um, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, probably a little bit more than that because then in March I hit a thousand. So I want to say I was around 800, 900. And then as far as what was the second part to that question? <laughs> The whiskey's starting to hit me. Uh, what, episode, about, what episode would you have been at and your subscribership? So you've almost doubled. You're at 1,400 and some subscribers. Yeah. So you've almost doubled your subscribership in five months. Yeah. You've done 100. You're up to 140 reviews. I'm at 140. This is 140, I think. I got to double check that. I might have to change it if it's incorrect. But uh, I think I was probably around 100, maybe a little less than 100 at that time. Good. I think whiskey, whiskey is growing, the purchase, the fandom, the reviewers, and uh, I think that's going to continue worldwide for, I don't know, I still think a good eight years. So, um, how many years have you guys been doing this now? Was it, we're headed into four in October. Well, October will be four, so right. what, we're three and a little over three and a half right. years in. A little over. Nice. You we, guys had, are, we had real slow growth at first. Our uh -huh. first 800 to 1,000 subscribers was real slow, and probably because we were too goofy. You were goofy. I wasn't. I think – I think. Uh, Doing that, baby. Goof. <laughs> I think you guys actually opened the door for a lot of us, to be honest with you. I, I owe a lot of my subscribers to you guys because um, if it wasn't for you – like, you guys were the ones that really opened the doors to other whiskey reviewers because Horst and – Ralphie, they actually do their own thing and don't include anybody else. And they rely on that income, I think, quite a bit. So if it wasn't for you guys, I don't think the rest of us would grow nearly as quickly as we've been growing. Well, you would because you're good looking. Right. Beard. You're like yeah. Burt Reynolds and That's right. Tom Selleck like put that. together. Yeah. <laughs> and you teach. So what's, so what's your excuse? You guys. Uh... You're right. Just goof. We're goofy. <laughs> Honestly, we we've talked about it. We think, we think, um, you know, it's a rising tide. It it raises all ships. So right off the bat, um, Joanne McGinnis reached out to us pretty early on. Over um, yeah, what was it? It was over a toasting. You'd had a, a scraped a barrel. Ta one of the Talus. I think it was the Talisker Storm. Might have been I the Talisker right. Storm where we talked about how they reconditioned the cask and they scraped it and then they recharred it. And uh, so she'd reached out and the, we, you know, our whole deal was we're in competition with nobody. And it's really about all those that love whiskey, whether it's reviewers or drinkers or distillers or, or, you know, whoever. And, yeah. uh, and then Joanne talking about the whiskey fabric and how we're all knitted together. And is that shirt from Scotch Trooper? Yes. Scotch Trooper did the shirt. And yeah, cool interview that you guys did with Scott Trooper. He's a super cool guy. Yeah. And so right off the bat, it was just like, hey, we got to, you know, um, there's, I, I personally think there's so many whiskey fans and it's going to keep growing and growing that, that uh, the more all of us are out there, the more people that will, will find whiskey, realize that whiskey is fun. And I've had people tell me that rum's fun because you can put it in frozen drinks and daiquiris. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And so part of our deal is not only is whiskey like for everybody, but it's fun. I mean, we have a blast. Look at all, I mean, we have a fun time. It's, you got to have weird hats and, and there's crazy and there's blankets and DNA. <laughs> you know, uh, whiskey's fun. I, and that's the thing is um, when I literally, cause I have a lot going on. I'm a teacher. I teach kickboxing. I, you know, I wrote a, I wrote a book, believe it or not. Um, and I was deciding whether or not I was going to start this channel. And I, I was talking to my wife about it and like whether or not I was going to have the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how much fun it was going to be. So 
it's really hard to tell my wife how much work I'm putting into something that I really, really enjoy. So it's always kind of like, well, you have whiskey in the six that you enjoy. It's like, it's like a night out for me. It's, it's not fair actually. But there you go. There's the secret. So when, when work is play, and, and you would do it. I mean, we've talked. If we had 17 viewers, we would do it. He and I getting together, drinking whiskey, already a win. Already a win. So, yeah. so to, and, and then I think that comes through because we're just having fun. But then the editing's fun. You know, I'll, we'll, we'll film multiple shows at a time, and I'll be editing. It'll be my turn to edit. And I'll be editing something and be laughing. You know, my wife would be like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, I totally forgot that Scott's mocking me here when I said this. And so even in the editing, I'm having fun, you know, and I'll get real busy too. And, and I got younger kids, but but it's it's nice to get down and even edit because I'll forget and I'll go, oh my God, that's great. Or, well, you know, look at this intro. That was fun. And so like you said, it's a joy and everything else that comes out of it is just bonus. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I, I don't know about you guys, but I get a lot of slack from people that think we're, we're sample puppets. I, uh, that, that was a quote that somebody used recently and that we're always looking for freebies. Like we didn't start this channel to get freebies. It, it, in fact, I know I started this channel to try to help people buy the right product because I was so tired of going to the LCBO, wasting 200 bucks on a bottle that sucked. So uh, a lot of times, yeah, I give good marks, but that's because I do my research before I buy my bottles because I'm not gonna buy something that's crap just to give it a bad review. Number one, that's that's not why I'm here. I'm here to tell you guys what's good, not what's bad. And then number two, I don't wanna drink it after. You know what I mean? Why would I buy something that I don't wanna drink? Sure, yeah, and ours yeah. is, sorry, go. Well, I was gonna say, we're starting to see now because we're at 340 reviews so we've got a lot more reviews of whiskey that are posted and I'm starting to see comments come in on older videos that we've done. You know, someone has just gone out and bought a bottle or they wanted to see what this bottle was like and they checked out our video. Mm -hmm. So the longer you do this and the more of those videos that you get posted, the more people that are looking, you know, what is this whiskey? Do I need to buy it or not? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. yeah. And then the value we bring is both the review and the fact that we have different tastes which is a nice sounding board, but then our other half literally is entertaining. I mean, our hope is that you watch and you, you can get a sense of the bottle, but that at the same time, you laugh a little bit, you chuckle, you're enjoying the deal. I'm getting velvet Elvis, you know, I mean, whatever's going on is part of it, honestly. No, it's, it's actually great because um, you guys are very good friends and you have very different tastes and that's not something that other whiskey reviewers shit like have they, there's um really good friends of ours that they have similar palettes so it's it, the fact the people watching are not getting different perspectives they're actually just getting the same perspective twice whereas with you guys they get the heated out like preference and the sherry preference and they get to see how the person that likes sherry feels about the Peter whiskeys and how the person that likes Pete feels about the Sherry whiskeys. And it's actually a really cool dynamic. Yeah. And then, and then it's our journey too, even from the beginning, because we'd talked and said, we, we don't know enough to really do a whiskey channel. And we thought, but we knew we would have fun. And then the, the idea was, well, people can join us on the journey. And then that's literally what it's really become. So we've gotten better. Because we've even talked, there's a couple of early episodes that I'll watch. I'll go back and check them out. And I'm like, wow, we were a little rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Scott wanted to delete one of them. I'm like, no, you got to leave it up. It's part of the tapestry. I, I deleted my first video because I just, it was embarrassing. <laughs> I just, I, do, I had, there was, there was a lot of views on it. I had about five or 600 views on it. And I was oh, like, wow. It's got to go. <laughs> oh, so yeah, we'll leave our, we'll leave it up. Because that's part of the deal as we journey. And, and uh, you know, and the help we've gotten along the way. I mean, this is all corny, but he loves Lord of the Rings. I love all that kind of stuff. There's I sometimes it. I feel like we're on this giant quest, and we keep having folks that will jump in and help us out at these crucial moments, right? Let's yeah. just say yeah. Roy. Uh -huh. 
yeah, look, we've got you've got a cape there that's been that. What's the magical power of the of the whiskey fabric cape? <laughs> See, now uh, I'm goofy. Actually, if you got, I know you guys are Lord of the Rings fans, and I know you're Star uh, War, Star Trek. Star oh, War. oh I yeah, know. no, I like them both, <laughs> Trek and War. I like them both as well, but love it both. If you like all those things, you you really should pick up this book. It's uh, the Name of the Wind by Patrick yeah. Rothfuss. He He's only written this. Uh, he's only written three books so far. Two books in this series, and the third one should be coming out. Well, I mean, it should have came out probably three years ago. But what's it's, the genre? What is it? It's fantasy. It's it's strictly fantasy. It, it's like if you liked Harry Potter, it's that on roids with maybe a little bit of um, you know, it's a lot darker. <laughs> Let's just say that it's a lot darker than Harry Potter, but similar idea. Um, there's no dwarfs or elves or anything like that, but it's it's definitely fantasy. I think you guys would really enjoy it. Cool. But that's uh, definitely been what we've, I mean, that journey. <laughs> and just being able to experiment. You know, I mean, shootouts and verses and live shows and boom and, you know, I don't know. That's, you know. Yeah. I mean, most of our stuff, as far as, well, for probably both of us, Mine's been what I call on the job training. Oh yeah. It's buying a bottle and cracking it. And it's just, you know, when we first started out, we were scotch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was it. And we said, we ought to branch out. We, I think we did an Irish, we did one bourbon. I picked like, up the, 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 uh, well, you had the Cavalon. Yeah. And then I picked up that Amru. Amru. You know, we started branching out. I was like, well, let's try this Indian whiskey. Let's try this Taiwan whiskey. Right. Let's do I'll never forget your, your review of, um, Northern Harvest, because when it first came out and it was going crazy, everybody was talking about it. You guys came out with the review and you guys were renovating the basement. Is that, who's uh -huh. basement? That? Yeah. That's yeah. We'd actually come out with that three months before uh, Murray had it in the, the whiskey Bible as his. Well, it was, it was available in the States before Canada. True. But everything's available in the States before yeah. Canada. Yeah. That shelf we're sitting on, that's my big, oh, Lordy Hammer. <laughs> that shelf we're sitting on is my like board game shelf and we were just leaning on it and did a review on it because we also did a review of um sherry yeah sherry we did a we pure did. cream sherry before that because we were trying to review you know we knew okay there's a sherry influence let's actually review what the sherry is so we can nose and pick actually that no out. that was port that was port, port. you're right that was the port that's a good idea honestly i i really feel like uh, whiskey reviewers should be drinking more sherry, more port, more Madeira, oh, yeah. brandy, masala, all of it. Brandy. Yeah, um, our, our brandy XO one gets tons of views. We get comments though, like I got ripped on this brandy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm guessing it was around thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. It was a good brandy, but no, that's been the fun. We had, and uh, Tom R just commented that we need to get into aged rums. Yeah. Well, the only thing I say is we're at, we have a hard time keeping up True. with whiskeys True. and bourbons. Well, and I would love to do, I mean, you know, we did the one um, oh, from Mexico, the uh, Mezcal. The Mezcal. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a guy from Delirium. from that company said, hey, thanks, and if, and we're going to try to do a live thing with him. So right. That's pretty cool. I, I've done a few age drums. I've done the Appleton 21, the uh, El Dorado 15, and I want to say <coughs> – uh, the Appleton 12 as well. I can't remember exactly, but oh, and um, Agostura, 12 years old. So I've done a few, but nothing overly crazy, that's for sure. My thought is when we retire from our regular nine to five job, <laughs> then uh, we could do like extra, like a Tuesday tequila. Yeah. <laughs> We could do well, a, well, well. See, a now, Thursday though, we do, rum or something. We do right? Saturday shows and Sunday right. live streams. Right. And a Wednesday. When we retire and we do this, it will be Monday through Friday, and weekends will be. They'll be like, "Where's the dummies? Days off. Days off. That's right. No shit. That makes a lot of sense. Actually, that would be great content for you guys as well. That's a good yeah, idea. That's not a bad idea. Monday through Friday. Yeah. With the occasional live run on a Saturday, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Would you guys say that you guys are officially getting into the green after what you've spent on your channel? Yeah, we're close, mm, maybe. Being almost four years in, I think it would take one more year. Within the year, we'll probably 
And that was, you know, we talked about when we first started. If we make enough to pay for the bottles right. we're reviewing. Right. Well, one, it'll make my button. wife happier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If my wife, if but, I can go in and say, hey, the, this bottle's already been paid for, she'll be like, okay. Keep in mind, when we started, though, too, we were doing four episodes. We were right. doing the Saturday Scotch review. And then we added Wednesdays with the bourbon right. and Canadians. So then we're at eight. Then we're at eight. Now we've thrown in live streams. The we're good doing... thing with the lives, though, is one reason we want to do some live shows, we were getting a lot of samples in. Yeah. And we thought, well, what a good way to, to do a sample and then to have – whether it's uh, someone who sent us a sample, a distiller, you know, uh, you know, any, you know, whoever on, and that that if they sent us a sample, we didn't need because we we felt at the time if we're doing the full you know pre-recorded show, we wanted a, a, the bottle and the, and the packaging and the marketing, um, and and that was kind of the idea early on with a live show. And I know I've said it too many times, but there's a good buddy of mine that was a huge different different guy from what I was used to, but a board game reviewer, he invited me on his live Google Hangouts. I told Scott to tune in. Now, he was like, that was dumb. <laughs> he goes, however, I like the technology. And because uh, that guy would do like a four-hour show of just board game talk. <laughs> but that was where we got the idea of doing, hey, you know, let's do a live show. So... Now, thinking back, I think what helped me kickstart a little bit was um, I, I became friends with a couple of the ambassadors and and um, the PR company for McAllen in Ontario, and they they allowed me to invite my subscribers to a McAllen event that was happening downtown Toronto, and I, I was uh, lucky enough to meet one of the guys that was on earlier. I'm not sure if he's still here, Chris. He brought me a sample of. A Bunnahabhain 25 year old so it, it's just I mean a whole bunch of people that were subscribed to me at the time came to the event got to have you know uh, I think we we sampled basically all of the 1824 series of McAllen including the rare cask thank you Chris he just said yep <laughs> um, it's just it's such a cool thing they honestly the best part of this channel is the whole time we're meeting really cool people um, having a lot of fun. It's not pretentious and the people that are pretentious kind of wean themselves away from the group, 100%. you know? So, um, and I, I don't know about you guys, but it's getting hard to keep up with all the reviewers that are out there. So it's difficult to watch everybody's reviews. And I'm, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. I don't even have enough time to watch my reviews and edit them properly. So I don't know. <laughs> We've got, I think we're just over 40 people that we subscribe to and watch. Yeah. And, and and even, I mean, I probably watch every three, maybe every third or every fourth yeah. episode of yours. Uh, you know, it's just kind of tune in once in a while, see how things are going. But I'll say too, Scott's the connoisseur here. I mean, he's always like finding, hey, check this this gal out or hey, go look at this guy or, or hey, look at, he was the one that told me, hey, go look at what this food quick guy did. It's all meta. You know, he did this live thing of us and thing i was like wow you know so you're really doing great searching those out now i know scott lines up 98 percent of our live guests too so it's part of it well you're busy i've got children someday we'll both be retired <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's getting tough i mean i don't some of my subscribers may know but my wife my wife and i are expecting in november so it's oh all right yeah, it's getting a little more challenging to uh, to keep up with everything. Well, and now see, my kids are teenagers. I got a seventeen-year-old and an almost fifteen-year-old now. So, I mean, when they get that age, they're more self-supporting. Right. You don't have to go get them ready for bed and right. you know bathe yeah. them. I can't wait. My son. He's hold on, hold on. You don't bathe your teenagers. <laughs> Just once in a while, you have to go and show them how to clean <laughs> properly. Roll in after a kegger. Yeah, son, you haven't cleaned your armpits. Dad's here to help out. Dad, not again. <laughs> so, but no, this and for me, this would have been a lot. My wife of actually just tuned in for the first time in a long time. You are on daddy duty tomorrow morning. I think she's just. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, honey, we're gonna be here for a while. So, <laughs> go. Um. Well, oh no, I was I was saying it would have been. 
when my kids were younger, though, it would be a lot tougher to do this. To an extent, but I, I'm still amazed that you're at sporting events nonstop. Yeah. I don't, and and I don't have as much of that. Yeah. So I mean, you're 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 physically at locations where you can't be editing. So I don't know, but that's where you're good. So that's, I, that's, I've got a ten year old and an eight year old. He's taking the kids to go watch the sporting events, so it's okay, right? Or they're in it. Or no, you know, no, yeah. it's my kids' are sporting. Yeah, they're, they're they're huge. They're basketball tournaments or football, football games, yeah. track meets. Yeah, his kids are in all kinds of. My kid does. My one does soccer, but. Barely. <laughs> my son will be in, in Muay Thai soon. That's about it. Oh, that's awesome. He's he's two years old, so <laughs> he'll be two in August, actually. So My son would love that, but he won't do it. I told him, I said, hey, why don't you take a, anything? I mean, even like a parkour ninja thing or something, <laughs> a ninja gym or something. What? So, well, so, someday when we talk about work and things that have happened there, we got a story when Bart was <laughs> running one time. And he wiped out running down this sidewalk, and he looked like what I call a 747 without landing Right. Gear. Yeah, it came in like a belly landing like this. We could just – yeah, I guess we can't <laughs> tell the story on what no. we were doing. We, it was a, it was a, a, a high-intensity thing that was happening, and I had to move right. quickly. Yeah. And uh, – My phone just died, so I'm not able to keep up with the chat, let everybody know. Um we're at 35 viewers. We hit 36, but I think mine was included in that since my phone was on. Probably. That's good. Should we Should we do one more before we call it? I cannot. I cannot. He's got to drive. I've got to go. I've got to okay. drive. But I, can, right. I might I even have to leave, and you can keep her going. Well. Uh, we can shut up. It's been an hour and a half. Where are we at? Oh, it, it, what time is it? 10.30? That is flying. Good show. I guess so. Yeah, I had a good time. I do have to work in the morning. You have to work, yeah. Uh, are you, are you yeah. up early tomorrow? Not up too early, but uh, where I'm at, I'm getting for working on the fourth. I get like double time, triple time, almost. That a boy. Yeah, not bad. So, not bad. Uh, why don't you guys plug <laughs> your final, your twelve hours of boom and. Then we'll, uh, we'll, well this is cool. We haven't been on the plug your side, your yeah, side of the stuff. Tell, I love tell people where to find. Yeah. Us. So first of all, scotch test dummies.com. You want to go check out the website. It's designed in Scotland by a Scott. First yes. of all, um, you know, we've got some cool little nuggets on there. You can go see our list of, uh, every whiskey we re reviewed on the show, both our individual scores and the aggregate is there, which is, beautiful i i need to use it i've been getting lost <laughs> lately not to mention our shows but we're also going to be doing july 8th we're doing 12 hours of boom starting at noon uh central time in the states we're going to be doing 45 minutes a live show just like this with guests mostly although we're still trying to line up a few it's going to be fun chaotic and boom worthy i guarantee the bottle of wow will show up at least once, yeah. maybe near the end when things get dangerous. We're trying to work in. Cousin Shane has agreed to make some appearances, so he'll be there. So tune in for the boom. You're, um, and then we've also got – we well, just I'd like to say, I don't think we expect – maybe there will be a few people that try to tune in for 12 hours. I don't think we expect everybody to tune in for – I know, I know I expect people be joining in and out throughout the day. So I expect them to join in and stick for 12, 12 hours. No, hours. no, with us killing the show, that was part of the deal is that 45 minutes off. So, yeah, you know, now somebody goes out to mow the lawn or whatever. Boom. Oh, shoot. Let me tune back in. Oh, look who they got here. And that's why we'll be teasing yeah. some of the guests. Mark Gillespie will be a guest. That's one of our guests that will be on. Awesome. Yeah. You can go to the, the calendar on the website, scotchtestdummies.com. Right. You can see the, the 12 hours, who's when, and what we'll be drinking for the most part. We've right. still got a few to work out. So you can join us. We've also got a 16 bottle blind Ooh, bourbon shootout. Just started just filming today. Started filming today. Yeah. Bourbon, so, 16 of them, blind, double now, blind. There's, we're going to be doing a free t shirt giveaway with that. Oh, there, yeah. there will be details on, on our website. You will that. be able to vote for your own bottle via the website. We're going to have a vote up. You can go and vote for your favorite bottle of the right. 16 uh, and get registered for a free t 
t-shirt as well as a coin from the championship round. Right. Actually, okay. from the championship winner. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably it. But at all times, Wednesdays are uh, bourbon and America's whiskey, things from Canada, occasionally from Mexico. Go ahead. Well, we've got some great artwork. We'll be tweeting True. on Instagram. We'll be some artwork for both. The Look like movie posters. Movie posters. And only. the 16 bottle blind. Right. Bottles. And then yeah. Saturday is our Scotch and World Whiskey Show. Sundays, we're doing some kind of live show almost every Sunday. That's not guaranteed, but we're getting more and more guests. And we'll sometimes, I like when, when I'll remote in from my office, and sometimes it's just he and I. Sometimes I like that as well. And the wife likes those because I don't have to travel over to his house. <laughs> and I, I tend to linger here when we're done. We're like, hey, and then it'll well, be midnight. Just And look at uh, a comment that kind of just came in what the 12 hours allowed us to do though too is kind of reach some of our international audience right because i mean across the pond there's six seven eight hours korea is uh, right. 14 hours yeah. ahead mark's of us. gonna be on we almost had to no, he's not. oh he's not he couldn't make it i thought he was gonna make it no we didn't ask him we didn't ask him disregard <laughs> <laughs> sorry mark i thought he was in <laughs> mark you're not in Mushrooms um, are coming. He's but, giving me. I know him. He gave me the mad look. Like <laughs> idiot. He gave me the idiot look. I just got it. And now he's shaking his head like dummy. So the twelve hours. I thought though, he was in. We get. You know, if we do a show at two in the afternoon, you mentioned Korea because they're fourteen hours. Ahead. I know. Why would you mention Korea if they're not going to be on the show? About people tuning in and watching. You were talking about guests. Audience. We got an international guest coming in. Okay. Disregard. <laughs> Anyway, we're fighting later. It's going to be Muay Thai over here, brother. <laughs> well, um, I want to thank you guys for joining us now tonight. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. I know these guys all love you guys. All 32 of the viewers tonight um, are already subscribed. I know it. If not, do so now because these guys come out with some of the best whiskey. They have awesome banter, as you can tell. And they're just really, really <laughs> genuinely cool guys. So, you guys got to check them out. Um, if you're available next Saturday, I know you're all going to be tuning in. Um, maybe if they allow me, maybe I'll give away one of my hats to make sure that somebody comes on Ooh. my 45 minutes uh, on Do your it. channel. I'll Do see it. You. I bet you. Do yeah. it. Yeah, cool. Um, if you tune in to uh, my 45 minutes, which will be at 6 Eastern time, and it's – Five o'clock central. Am I correct with that? Uh, five yes. Cent, five central, right. six, six eastern. eastern. Yes. We're wow. one hour off. I right. hope. Is that what we said? Yep, that's correct. I believe. I'm going. Uh, the, the person that can answer a trivia question in the back, I'll probably display it somewhere on the back. It'll have something to do with a fantasy book or a movie. All right, there's the hint. Uh, sure. We'll get a free hat. All right, free black on black whiskey in the six snapback. Sweet. Yep, 5 o'clock Central, 6 Eastern. Got it. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Um, you guys stay on the line if you guys can, and I will say good night to everybody else. If you guys haven't already subscribed, you can catch us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I believe these, you can find these guys as well on all three of those things, as well as Patreon. All right. Uh, we appreciate all of you who do subscribe and contribute to those types of things. So thank you, guys. It's been a blast. Cheers. So on you. Dummies. <laughs>